This camera was a $65 million project. It cost $2,000 roughly per unit, and I just dropped it on its head. Not all is lost, however. I use my engineering brain, which I don't have because I went to school for journalism. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber now, I don't make money. And I figured out a way to fix it by dropping it again. That didn't work. Third time's a charm and it wanted to charge and fire up finally. So we are out here on a brisk Duluth, Minnesota day, taking pictures of the ships in Canal Park with a light L16 camera, an anomaly, right? preventative measure because my cameras hate the cold weather just like the light L16. Now I doubt there's any kind of weather proofing and if there was it's compromised because again I gave this thing brain damage. But hopefully we can stay out here long enough to take some usable shots with this strange little camera. Which colors we're gonna get in this purgatory time of year, yeah? See this? Android operating system. It's like a fat freaking brick phone. Please excuse the sudden audio quality dip. My microphone's died. Uh, just like everything else, my camera's dying. It's cold, it's getting dark quick. But I wanna use the light L16 for some light street photography. See if it can hold up. Let's talk about this holy little device that I got super dirty just from touching. There's only two mashable buttons on this physical body, but the touch screen is very well implemented, even on my Charlotte's Web hood certified screen. Thank you for that Android. Switching settings is pretty easy, whether you're shooting fully auto, semi-auto mode like aperture priority, or even fully manual. It's all within the touch of your fingers. And I love how easy it is to use the zoom features on the L16. It's as simple as a pinch to zoom or lobster claws for your wide angle shots. But let's talk about the actual performance of the camera. Now, it's worth noting that it's cold here where I live and the L16 just doesn't like winter weather. Now, I do understand that mine has <laughs> a shout out back, right? But from what I've read on the internet, a lot of people tend to share the same sentiments and a lot of smartphones of the time that this was released weren't really weather sealed per se. And I'm not saying the L16 is like a smartphone, right? But it shares a lot of inherent similarity. Now this camera isn't the fastest on the field when we're talking about its 30 second boot up time, but once it's on, firing to composing and executing that shot is within reason. And sometimes it will miss focus, especially in low light situations. Yeah, there is post focusing options, but you have to hit that shot to have sharp information to work with in post 
You can't just be sharpening a soft image. That's not how it works. That information has to be there. And shooting with the L16 is relatively easy overall, but there are some quirks. The stippling around the body does feel nice, but ergonomically, it's not one of my favorite cameras to hold. I get it. It's a camera with 16 different sensors, lenses, and focal lengths. It's hard to make, and I appreciate what they're trying to do. But with someone with greasy sausage fingers like me, I find myself obstructing a lens or a camera, whatever you want to call these units or two. I'm sure if I were to use it more, it would smoothen out just by me finding a better way to grip this thing. But if I were to pass this off to say another person to take my pictures or Lord knows a protographer out on a professional paid gig, they'll be doing the same thing. I do like the idea of this camera though. Just having these options for looks and focal lengths in one brick system makes for an easy carry that I don't have to worry about dust or debris getting into the glass. At large, well, you know what I mean. Now let's talk about workflow. Post-processing is interesting. From my knowledge, you have to run it through their Lumen Beta software in order to export anything. And I'm not saying the software is bad, it's just slow. Like it's slow to load, it's slow to edit, then it's slow to export every image. But in the defense of the L16, I want to mention one, that the camera more or less never really left its beta phases. And two, which is a bright side, it's starting to develop somewhat of a cult following of smart engineers and camera nerds that are breathing new life into the system, which means that they've already found a way to hack and mod this camera as well as continue on with potential future firmware and add-ins for the L16. Lumen, its software offers the basic stuff. Well, color correcting, cropping, and yes, even post focusing. Adding bokeh to an image does look relatively natural, but it can come up with weird artifacts or effects. I personally opted for just using the app to convert my files to a readable DNG that I could then edit in Lightroom. But let's talk about the image quality of the L16. Now, early reviewers when this camera first came out canned it more or less because they said it looks a lot like a smartphone image. And in doing so, the rest of the world more or less dismissed the camera. Unfairly, I feel, because, well, yes, it's within a $2,000 price point, right? <laughs> so it's then competing with uh, prosumer cameras of the time with like the ADD or even some full frame options out there. But I feel like it could take just as good images as most compact cameras. And then with some post producing, they look pretty damn good in my opinion. Like there's ample information in your files to do some bending and color corrections and even very intensive cropping. I was impressed with the L16 personally, especially with what it can do for the crops. This camera came out some time ago and there's already a lot of good videos going over the specs, discussions why it flopped, and even the marketing side of things. But I just wanted to go out and test it as a photographer myself myself and get some serious, usable, and meaningful shots, which I feel like no one really did with the L16. And although this camera is defunct and the company is no longer, the creators of it are still doing good things within the tech world. And yeah, you see cameras like this where nowadays? on your smartphones, which the OG creators of the L16 did some pretty cool stuff with brands like Nokia. The reason I bring this up is because they're still around and they're driving, just not with the L16. Now, just my two cents. I feel like the L16 came out to replace the dying compact camera market, but unfortunately it did so at twice, damn near triple the cost of one of those cameras. And again, if you're at that $2,000 price point, you might as well just start looking for a single large sensor interchangeable lens camera system. But I really hope a company were to revisit a style of camera like this in the future because there is a lot of potential here, especially coming in the way of a system where you don't have to worry about changing lenses, protruding them, but still can come out with both a clean image and a very compact system you can take anywhere with. And I feel like that's where the L16 went wrong, especially at its price point. And if you insisted to keep it at $2,000 like they did, 
maybe add some options for even just interchangeable batteries because it will then further future proof it for someone like me because once that battery dies in here it's dead forever and again i'm just talking about if this camera were still on shelves not in the hands of tech nerds out there but i'm sure they'll come up with a usable solution in the coming future the light l16 was an ambitious unique and odd idea of a camera <laughs> but i wish that we saw it fully fleshed out or still on shelves today, especially with its add-ins here, like the modular port, the audio jack, which indicates that maybe this could have done video, but I really like the concept of it. Maybe not the overall design or ergonomics, but the idea is there. And that's coming from somebody that does do a lot of stacks, stitches and brackets in post-production. So having a system that take 16 pictures all at once and binds them together it's very novel for a person like me and the image quality is good to me it's comparable to a compact camera but when you put the images through its cutting room floor in post-production you can do a lot of magic with the information there now having said that i'd like to get out with this camera if the algorithm likes this video in the near future so subscribe for more content like this thank you for watching find me on instagram at matt's notes i love you and i will see you later